What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. One thing about trading is you, I miss Phil's every single day, right? Everybody misses yep. Phil's every day. And so it happens to everybody, right? Like missing Phil's is part of the game. Like I cancel at least, I don't know, on all of my tickers, I probably cancel at least 10 orders a day. You know, it just happens, right? I mean, it doesn't happen, right? You just don't get it. Now this is every now and then you're going to run into a stock that just beats you, right? And this, and this is why I want to include this one today. This stock, I mean, honestly, I think I ended the day green on this. Like, it, it didn't beat me P&L wise, but like, or, or break even the small green or something like that. I think more, more break even, actually, now that I remember. I was basically break even on this sticker. It didn't beat me financially, but this stock just fucked me mentally. Like, every now and then you're going to run into a stock. And here's the thing. It's very important that you don't let the, the one stock that's just going to beat your strategy. This, you know, your strategy isn't going to fit every single mold all the time, right? Your strategy is not going to fit that. Like, your strategy is going to work. A lot of the, like, a successful strategy will work most of the time. You know, the market's not going to, like, you, you're, I talked about this in the third webinar I ever did, Trading is an Art, Not a Science. Your trading style is a mold, right? And how rigid or how flexible your mold that's kind of up to you and your design. But you know, you have a mold that somewhat bends with the market. The market's not gonna fit into your mold perfectly every single time. Every now and then there's gonna be a stock that just like comes and runs into your mold and then runs away and then comes at it at another angle and runs away. And it, you're just not gonna catch this and it's just gonna beat you, right? Like it, it, maybe it, it's the one that just stops you out over and over and over again. Like there's going to be that stock that just beats you and you, you have to make sure that when this stock comes along, that you, it doesn't wreck you. It doesn't wreck you emotionally. It doesn't wreck you financially. Like essentially make sure that you don't have a big red day when the stock comes because it will eventually come. The stock that just fucking beats you. This was this stock for me. This stock just fucking beat me, beat me up mentally. And the how it beat me is all of these arrows are, are where I want, there's one that wasn't narrow, but every other single one I missed by fucking pennies. And you guys know me, like you guys have seen my live trade videos. I have designed an entire system based on replacing orders because like that, that's how I ensure I get my fills. Like I need to get my fills. Like I have a system designed on replacing order. It's my number one, like it's my number one thing that I absolutely hate in trading because for me, missing a fill means you were correct, but you didn't make money. Right. That, like that's just like, Hey, you're right, but no money for you. That, that, that ultimately just grinds my gears. So like I've designed a whole trading system on replacing orders to get the fill. That being said, I, I did that even a couple times and I still just miss, miss, miss. I missed here. The whole idea was this broke 240 was pre-market highs and like 250, you know, besides the wick here, 250 was basically the whole dollar number that was the high of the day uh, right here. And then we broke. So my, my entire order was, was 250 based on 250, 240. I wanted a dip uh, by first. Actually, I had a first resistance short here, right? Like, like I said, it tanks and then the first pop back up to 250, I shorted it and covered it really fast. Those have been working great, right? I had a, a few more of these this week that, that were just great, uh, just quick ones. And then I, I actually longed it. I, I, did a, a, I did a first resistance and then I did a just quick support buy right back up. Actually overfilled a little bit, got a little short and had to cover. But thankfully, like I covered right there for break even. Um, here's one that I didn't really trade. Um, uh, I don't know if you traded it. This is one where I was kind of making a like a funny joke all all day long. As as I said, dude, I, I'm not gonna touch it till like 350, and then four, and then 450. Like so, I was <laughs> having a fun joke. I, the thing is, I didn't want to locate it, and I didn't. I actually didn't. I never located it. Th this is like a blow up stock, right? When stocks do this, right? And this is this has kind of been the theme of the week, right? Trend, like literally, the, like Harry is supposed to picture a front side versus backside. I mean, you just draw a line right there, front side, backside. It looks very, it's, I mean, picture perfect, right? Uptrend, then yeah. downtrend. 
I mean, this has just kind of been the theme of the week. Now, I actually didn't get a short onto this. Like, I considered it here. I really, I in hindsight, hindsight's the easiest thing in the world. I should have. Did you trade this at all after this? Um, I, I, I don't think I trade this. Uh, it like, this. Yeah, I, I want it after the death candle. Yeah. Trust me, I want it and so like, bad. It fits the mold. It fits the mold. It's reversal time. It's through a hole and a half dollar. It pops over. It's about 50% of the death candle. It fit, yeah, it's perfect. It fit the mold. I just, I, I didn't like, I don't know what was in my mind at the time. And that's the, and see, that's the thing. Whatever I had in my mind wasn't trade the simple pattern, right? Whatever was in my mind, I didn't trade the simple pattern. And then it tanked again. And then I was like, fuck, well, now the trade's done, right? I had that. I can't chase it. And I actually ended up I mean, I, I mean, right. my problem is that I cannot focus, uh, you know, more than two stocks. I mean, if I'm trading something at that point, I, I, I just can't, you know, focus on, on something else. I have to focus on just one stock and maybe another one, but not the third one. It's something like that. And so I think CLS, uh, CLSK, that was the third one, I think. And I had it, you know, far away from my screen, like, you know, on the corners. Yeah, I'm the same way, dude. One to two is all about I can do. But yeah, like yep. stocks like this, the thing is like as when you see a stock like this, the best thing to do is just say, I'm going to wait for two things. A simple short, meaning I'm going to short like the first, the first pop after a hard pullback or it's got a death candle. Right? I, death candles are more ideal. I think that's probably what I had in my mind. I typically don't like death candles off the top. You know, like I prefer death candles not off the top. That's just me personally. Like I'd rather kind of pull back, like, you know, like pull back, consolidate, you know, push up and stuff, right? Like that's the kind of stuff. I, like that's a death candle. Just I feel like when they come off the top, they're more likely to grind back because they're still close to the top. Whereas if they're off the highs a little bit, and then they push up and stuff. Now we're significantly off the highs and we death candle. It's definitely done. I have that more conviction than I do. That's probably what was in my mind now that I think about it. Why should your stop hold? It's very important to the thesis of your trade to understand the thesis of your trade and the time frame of your trade. Why should my stop hold? Right? Is it, is, is it the major line that's holding it down? Did it just death candle and that's the top? What is the thesis of the trade? Right? Why is it supposed to hold? If it's a line and it's a prior high of day, Dude, it might pop back up there and flurry one more time. And that's still your level holding. But if you stop out, that's, you know, you having too tight of a time frame um, with a larger, you know, area of a larger time frame for your reward. And maybe that's not the best stop. Why should $25 hold and not go and test it one more time and possibly get to twenty five fifteen, right? Something like that, right? Maybe, you know, that... It's probably you being a little too tight, asking for the sock to be super nice and just reject 25 without any questions asked. With that thesis, that's not normally how it goes. Now, is it the top of a death candle? Okay, that's a little bit more binary, right? That's more binary. That, that, you should not see that again. You could, you know, that's why that stop should hold. It should not be seen again. That's why the stop should hold. I have no problem covering it 502. If, it, if five is the top of the death candle, right? So ask these questions. It really helps you hone in on your understanding or, and realist, you know, get your realistic expectations for what you want out of your trade. And that prevents premature stop outs. And these are just yeah. things that, these are things I like to keep in mind before I put trades on. Bad stops stem from FOMO, right? So it's easy to have a bad stop if you have a shit entry. And bad stops lead to revenge trading, right? So it's easy to blow up account with a revenge trading. So really... Hot, like you, you put these together, revenge trading, I mean, blowing up accounts leads to for, stems from bad entries, right? So good stops for its bad stops. You could honestly make an argument it's, that it's all based on your entry. And it's funny because this is one thing that Bao has preached for years. The entry, and he'll say the entry is the most important part of the trade. And it's true because like literally your entire stop revolves around, you, you know, what your entry looks like, right? So a trade is only as good as the stop. And then, you know, parentheses, really, it's only as good as the entry. So good stops, keep in mind, and this is something I added last second here to this slide. I get so many messages in the middle of, of the week where it, I bought this stock and it stopped me out. Like I, I was risking here and here's the problem. They risked like 
five cents at the open or 10 cents at the open. Now, guys, at the open, you have a 10 cent risk. That's nothing. <laughs> like, you have a 10 cent risk at the open, like in the first five, 10 minutes, maybe even 15. I mean, I mean, pick up, I mean grab, your, grab the nearest coin, flip it, and say, am I going to get stopped out? Put it this way. All the stops at the open, like you have an idea for a stop loss at the open, expect that to be tested, whether you're short or long. Expect your stop at the open to be tested with fucking slippage. So, if, you know, if you want to anticipate and like be there first, expect the test. You know, it's at the open, it's better to be almost do reactive trades and like wait for the death count will short the pop. You know, wait for the dip to hold before you buy and risk the bottom. Unless you have like a solid line, you know, like, and it's a, like, it's an outer line at that. And, you know, and you're, and you're okay with it going through. Don't, don't try to anticipate the open. Don't try to put stop tight stops at the open, right? Like you're just, you know, you're, you're opening the door to get stopped out. And keep in mind in the middle of the day, when stocks are more range bound, if you decide to have a wide stop in the middle of the day, you're asking to get TTHP, right? I mean, if you have a wide stop at the, you know, in the middle of the day, stocks will grind and they will grind a long time. And if you, and the problem with grinding stocks, it's really easy to add. And if you have a wide stop and you're adding, I mean, this is, this is how you fuck up. This is how you fuck up in the middle of the day is, you know, on the middle of the day, I tend to like having tighter stops. Like I almost want that kind of free trade. Let me, let me get in at the top of the range. I'll give it like five, 10 cent slippage and that's it. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.